Spencer Lewis here for Inside Track. We're hanging out. We're bench racing. I got my man the driver, the number 35, limited late model out of Sunset Speedway, the instant classic Andy Cameron. We're also here with uh, car chief for Team 3 Red's entry on the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series and crew chief for Nick Getz's limited late model effort at tracks across the province, Grand Manis. So we're talking today a little bit about short track uh, happenings, what's going on over the, the Civic Holiday long weekend. We'll start with the Beat the Heat 150. Andy, Sean Chenoweth in that London recreational ride, picking up the win at Sauble Speedway. Kind of the way his season's gone, Chenoweth, another dominating effort, this time at Sauble. Yeah, Sauble's one of those places, you know, you're going to have a couple limited late model guys step up and with the huge weight breaks. Um, Jason Parker, he led for a bunch of it. Well, not, not really surprising, but at the same time, you got those coilover cars. You get better shocks, you get better tires, everything like that. Them guys know their cars inside and out. So, and Channel was at a monster season, so it wasn't really surprising. I mean, is it a is it a shock to you, being a former Sobel regular, that a Sobel guy wasn't able to to come out and, and represent for their home track and hold off some of these some of these outsiders, some of these Flamborough and Delaware cars? Um, you know, Sobel. They always say what Sobel. If you can get around Sobel, you can get around any racetrack in Ontario. That was one of the old sayings with it. Um, Chenoweth. I've talked to him before, he just told me, he goes, I got that white car, I got it set up, it's like driving a go-kart, so to see him come out on top is not a surprise, but at the same time, you know, Jason Parker, he's had an awesome season this year, I know McTeer didn't race anything in it, but I know Parker's in a monster season, and I was kind of surprised didn't see Parker in the top three. Now, what I want to ask you, because I, Graham, I, I know you, you monitor the uh, the Ontario scene real well, you know yeah. your drivers, you know, you know you're, you're out there at different tracks, would you consider John Chenoweth uh, in the elite of the division, whether it's pro late models or limited late models, would you, is, is Sean Chenoweth done enough this year for you to consider him top tier? Ah, most definitely. I'd have to say so. We go back about four years ago. The guy just won absolutely everything there was to win in racing. And I, he, the past two years, he's kind of fallen off a little bit. He hasn't done as much racing. And this year, he's picking up where he left off four years ago. Like, he's got how many wins at Flamborough now? Two? He's got, he's got, I believe, three now. Three, three now. wins at, at uh, the time of this video. Yeah. Plus the Beat the Heat 150. You know, leading the points right now in weekly competition at uh, Flamborough. I, I'd definitely say, he's, to me, he's probably like the most elite pro late model driver we have in province right now. And I just think, guys, think he can drive. I mean, and it really speaks to that that London recreational racing team. When you look at what, what Mike Mike Schmidt has assembled, when you got Chenoweth leading the way, Andrew Gressel has had a monster season with the Oscar Super Late yeah, Models. Oh, he's, yeah. he's flying the, the London Rec banner. You got Brad Collison. You got Russ Aiken. I mean, there, there are so many guys. Coming up uh, right now, I mean, Jake Collison doing monster things in the go-kart ranks out of the Waterloo Regional Kart Club. He's running for London Recreational Racing. So Mike Schmidt has an eye for talent. He's assembled a, a huge team. Channel is just bringing home another another trophy for the case over at London Recreational Racing. A good segue into my next topic. I want to talk about the Oscar Super Late Model Tour. Brandon Watson at Peterborough Speedway on Saturday night. He got the win in 50 lap competition. Uh, a bit of a snooze fest with Watson sort of checking out on the field. We know how good the nine car is at Peterborough. Yeah. Just another example of that. Oh yeah, most definitely. Like, you know, Brandon Watson's team, like they don't, they don't screw around. They don't beat around the bush. They, they know what they're doing. Like you got Tim Watson, Brandon Stad. He's a real smart guy. You got Stevie, like another smart guy. He's probably like one of the smartest guys in the province. Stevie Lillico, absolutely. Yeah. Like, no, there's no doubt. There's no reason why he shouldn't be running every race this year. I mean, is it a, is it a, is it a surprise that someone like Jeff Hanley has? I mean, I know he's not running the full tour. But he's coming now. He's made three starts at Sunset with you know the double shot of the Beaterman. He was out at Sunset uh, last week, three starts, and we have yet to see the 70 car with a win. He's got a podium finish, but that's about it. Given how successful and how dominant Hanley's been in the in the last couple of seasons, is that a surprise, Andy? Uh, you know, me personally, I expect Hanley to run better. He is running good. You know, you're running top tier series. Back to just touching base on Brandon Watson. He's got Brian McDonald with him every weekend yeah. now. Brian McDonald. He is no slouch. He knows his stuff. And, uh, you know, that Oscar Tour, you got Andrew Gressel there, brand new Brian McDonald chassis, a Hamke car, and uh, it, they've really stepped their stuff up from a couple of years ago. You had, you know, Hanley and uh, who else you have in there? China was in there. You didn't have a lot of top, top guys. Glenn but Watson was, Glenn was Watson dominating. Glenn Watson was huge in there, too. And now you got a lot more guys that have kept, brought stuff to the table and a lot better equipment. So it's not surprising, but at the same time, you got to be out there every weekend getting to know this stuff. So... Yeah. Parody's been so huge. Or, I was going to say Parody's been the name yeah. of the game with, with with a lot of guys running really well. Kevin Cornelius, yeah. you know, he had a bad night at, at Peterborough, he had a bad night at Sunset, but you still can't take away anything from that from that KDM no. Motorsports team. They've got that brand new McCall Racing Enterprise chassis, and they've really hit their marks from the first race of the season. I think they've turned a lot of heads. 
it definitely turned my head. Like, I, to be honest, I I didn't think Kevin was gonna like you know, be as good as he was right off the bat. I like, figured like you no, know, he's gonna take a couple races, kind of get field things, but right off the hop, like he was he was quick and like you no, know, every week he's getting more seed time. He's getting better. He's getting, yeah, he hasn't had luck on his uh, side past couple of nights, but like he's he's getting better. Like you no, know, Mike McCall built him an awesome car. Like that car's got the best of everything on it, and like you no, know, it's working for him. It, it, it's really brought. Uh, a, a new interesting component with the different chassis names starting to win races. I mean, now you got Glenn Watson and Dwayne Baker both on a Port City Racing yeah. chassis. When you, yeah. when George Wilson shows up, he's on a Port City Racing chassis. But Gressel's in a Hanke by McDonald. Cornelius is in an MRE chassis. You got the rest of you know the Jeff Hanley chassis all do very very well. Yeah. I mean, all of a sudden it's almost like you you would like to see Oscar formulate a sort of manufacturer's championship for the for the chassis companies with all the different guys that we've got. Putting uh, putting metal on the racetrack and trying to make a name for themselves. Do you feel as though MRE, uh, with Kevin Cornelius being their first chassis, MRE might be just right around the corner from their first career Oscar championship? Yes and no. I don't. I don't. I think no. Not doubt. not necessarily with Kevin Cornelius driving. I'm I'm thinking maybe that 17 car might sell a few chassis heading into 2014, 2015. Yeah, no doubt. Like you know, doubt, no doubt. McCall makes an awesome car. Kevin Cornelius being his first year, he's doing a great job at it. Um, but like you said, uh, you know, you got uh, Dwayne Baker, they've got a Port City cart, it runs awesome. Uh, Glenn Watson, Port City cart runs awesome. You know, maybe maybe there's a bit more, like you said, competition there with the chassis-wise. You know, JR, he's come out quick, but not really had the luck this year. That's an FLF car, stuff like that. It's uh, Hanley, he's always got good stuff. When you step into that super late model division, there's a lot more guys there that can, well, you know, get you what you need. Not just, you know, you're not just sticking with that one chassis manufacturer. I'm going to ask you, man. Brandon Watson has led the points from the beginning of the season. You know, he's racked up victories. He's gone to victory lane. He's, he's had dominant performances. Still on top of the points. Is there any chance we could see someone come in and, and, and topple that number nine team through the back half of the year? I don't think so. Like, Brandon, he's just an unbelievable driver. Guy's got so much talent, like, so much real control. It's going to be hard to say. Like, we might be seeing a guy like Kevin maybe step up just a little bit more, maybe knock off a few wins as he's getting more comfortable in the car. But. Right now, I don't, I don't really see it happening. Maybe, maybe Gressel, but I really don't see it happening. Oscar Modifieds, uh, they, they've, you know, they're this, they're a good feeder division for the super late models, and they've got a phenomenal assembly of talent. I mean, there's a lot of good quality young drivers coming up. There's different chassis makes. They've got everything uh, an interesting series needs. They've had a bad couple of races. They've lost uh, a couple of a couple of good cars now, with the instances that have come up, but. There's more questions than answers when it comes to guys like Brent McLean, guys like Gary McLean. I mean, Brent McLean looked brilliant during the Don yeah. Biederman Memorial win weekend. He had a win on night one. He was second on night two. Yeah. Now he's had two events where he sort of missed the setup a touch. Is the seven car maybe feeling the pressure of, of being at the top of a high-profile tour? Does that have something to do with it, or has it just been bad luck for that team? Uh, I, I think it's a bit of both. Like, to me, you kind of create your own luck. And if, you're, if you miss something at the shop, you're going to miss that at the track. And that's like that's the biggest thing in racing. Uh, it, you can say it might be just because he missed a setup or something like that, but it could be just pressure getting to him. It's very hard to say, but I think it's just a combination of a whole bunch of things that are getting to him. I mean, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Yeah. Gary McLean dominated 2012, won the first championship, he swept Sunset, went to victory lane at Delaware. I mean, he he was the show anywhere the Oscar Modified Tour went in 2013. He's got a good program. He won the season opener, and now he's won two in a row at Sunset in Peterborough. Has it been a surprise to you watching the Oscar Modified Tour that that season hasn't been Gary McLean sort of showing the way like he did in the inaugural tour? Uh, yes and no. Like, you know, with Brent McLean, yeah, he's he's been running good, no doubt, but at the same time, he, uh, he's been doing a bit of super stuff too, so maybe that's taken a bit of focus. I've done double duty before. It ain't easy. It ain't easy keeping track on two cars. Um, you know, Gary, he's been really good this year but not as much luck but at the same time you know Greg's not always he's back working with Scott Steckley in the Kane Tire Series stuff so maybe not all his focus is going on that you know Greg's a very smart guy and you got guys like Davey Terry Hanley works on his stuff more good equipment stuff like that Shane, Shane Stickle Shane has that Stickle. Troyer by McCall yeah. Racing Enterprise chassis that car mark my words by the time you're watching this video he may have already won a feature yeah that car He's next in line. I mean, Stickle has been very, very good. He was a stud in the Canadian Vintage Modified ranks. Oh, yeah. He's coming for a victory. I, mark my words, quote me on that one. Stickle will be in victory lane by the end of the season. Moving forward, Peterborough Speedway, late model division. i got to give them kudos. 
for you know, let's say a handful of seasons, the Peterborough Speedway Division, their, their weekly limited late model class has been a bit of an afterthought in the in the provincial scene. Yep. You know, no one really paying attention to, to the type of talent they have out there. Now, all of a sudden, we're seeing Craig Graham, we're seeing Chris Mitchell on a regular basis winning races out there. Kelly Balson is fast when he shows up. Yep. Steve Foster and Corey Horner have both gotten their first career limited late model wins. Jack Horner's fast out there. All of a sudden, are, are we seeing a reemergence of, uh, of Peterborough Speedway as a player mm -hmm. once again in the limited late model scene? I would think so. Like, like you said, uh, for past like you know, five or six seasons, Peter Road is kind of like a like a starting pool for all the guys that are trying to get into late model racing and don't have the experience on the money and go there and some run somewhat decent and pick off the odd win. But I think uh, the talent pool is definitely getting a lot deeper there, especially of course the Speedway cutting uh, getting cut there. And, you know, you got Craig Graham that came over from Court Speedway. He's won what, four races this year so far, leading the, the points. points. Like, you know, Brian Mercer shows up every now and then. Dan McCaddy shows up here now. Remember, they show up there quick. And like, I think I think Peterborough Speed is definitely coming around for as far as the late model division is coming. And now, as a driver that's real familiar with the different rosters across the province, where would you rank Peterborough amongst uh, amongst the, the the limited late model scene in this in this province? I think Sunset's got it hands down, no doubt. Sunset is the deep end of the pool. If you go to Sunset and you win a race, you're getting the job done. But Peterborough. You know, they've mixed that ACT thing a little bit um, from a driver's standpoint. Yeah, you know, the ACT cars aren't allowed to run bumps, but your big spring cars, you're allowed to run bumps and stuff like that. It's kind of get a guy in there, the big spring car on bump stops, really knows what he's doing. He's going to, I think he's going to give these ACT guys a run for their money. It's just the way they've assembled the rules with the 603s, the triple discs. It's, um,. You know, from running a lot of 75 lappers, maybe a, maybe you know the triple disc could it'd get the job done in 30 laps. Or 75, you know, you may wear those tires out a little bit more. But you know, Craig Graham, he ain't no slouch either. When handsome Chris Mitchell won the Autumn Colors Classic in 2011, everyone sort of took a step back and it was like, wow, you know, a Peterborough Speedway regular won the Autumn Colors Classic for the first time in the limited late model division's history. With the assembly of talent they have now, with the roster they have now. Is there a chance that 2013 could see a Peterborough car win that event for the second time in three years? No doubt. No doubt. Like, uh, you know, if if I was a Peterborough Speedway regular and I didn't win Autumn Colors or I didn't see a Peterborough you know, car win, I would be disappointed. You've turned thousands of laps on that racetrack beyond what everybody else has done, so I'm going to expect to go out and win. If I When I was racing Solvo, somebody came into my backyard and won, I was disappointed. So... You know, you got the setup, you got the setup notes, you got guys that are 20, 30 guys that are going to come in there for a weekend and say, you know, come into my backyard, don't have as many setup notes, you don't expect them to be as fast, but at the same time, there's so many good cars out there these days, and uh, you never know what could happen. While we're down the core of the Lakes region, Mossport Speedway, yep. Canadian Time Motorsports Park, we're two weeks removed now um, from their final event. Shuttered, closed, they're done. You did a lot of a lot of a lot yeah. of weeks at Mossport. Yeah, you grew no, up at Mossport. Time, yeah. What are your thoughts on CTMP calling the quits? Uh, to me, I'm not really surprised, especially the past couple of years with new ownership getting in there. I knew they kind of wanted to get rid of the old folks. It, it they lose money whenever they run that track. But from from a personal standpoint, like I, I like I said, I grew up at Mossport. I spent a lot of years there, so I'm, I am kind of sad to see it go. But like yeah, again, I'm not surprised. When you look at the Mossport pit area. And I mean, they were they were they were lacking for cars, yep. and no one's gonna, you know, no one's gonna say otherwise. No. But when you want to talk about quality, you got Kyle Donaldson, you got Ken Donaldson Jr., you got yep. John Baker Jr., you got Dwight Brown, yep. and that's just scratching the surface of the talented assembly of of, of, of drivers they have at Moss for or CTMP. Pardon me, Mark Gordon. Where do these cars go from here? Could we see guys just, you know, put the stuff in the barn and walk away from it? Are other speedways gonna gonna pick up? This roster, or what happens now? Uh, you know, it's it's early to tell, but yeah. where do we go from here? It's it's hard to say. I can maybe see Dwight Brown and uh, Bob Brimpton maybe getting out of it. They've always been a Mossport car. You never really see them travel around anywhere. I think you might see Mark Gordon come to Sunset, Kyle Donson, and Ken Donson. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see them at Flamborough, maybe in uh, Peterborough. Like no Link Brown, he probably go to Peterborough. It, there's a lot of talent there that's got nowhere to race right now, so a lot of tracks could really feed off that. And really, when you look at the, the ACT-type cars, with Kawartha closing, they had an option to go down Mossport. CTMP accommodated them, as did yep. Peterborough. With CTMP closed now, if you've got an ACT-style chassis, you're either racing in Quebec, doing the odd show on the ACT tour, or yep. you've got to go to Peterborough. Yep. You don't really have an option now. Uh, you, you can go to Flamborough or Delaware and try to race ACT, but the... The way that Flamborough and Delaware have their rules right now, like they don't give any breaks for the ACT cars. 
which I think they need, especially when you're trying to race against 400 crate horsepower. Like, it's just, you need, uh, like, you no know, 50, 100 pounds taken off, because when you go to Flambro, they actually want to run full ACT rules on your 8-inch tire, 8-inch Goodyear, your 2 barrel carburetor, and, like, don't try running that against the 400 horsepower crate engine on 10-inch rims on American racers. Like, you, you just can't do it. We're going to wrap this up. What I want to know so far, 2013, we're a week past the halfway mark. What's been the biggest story of the season so far for you? Biggest story of the season so far, honestly, probably the points battle. You know, the everybody being so tight right now, um, even just at sunset, the not seeing one guy constantly come in and dominate. Like, you seen Mike Bentley, what, five, five features last year? Yeah. Five features last year, stuff like that. Um, he's only won one, but leading the points. Um, Jason Woody, he's won three, but at the same time, you're not seeing a dominating thing. Let's, we're not coming from the back and going to the front. Last weekend, you've seen the fast cars get to the front pretty quick. So, you know, I, I'm liking seeing Sunset. It's big. It's you got a lot of big variations in chassis right now. You know, you got a McCall car leading the points. You got a Port City car in second, and then you got a streamlined, streamlined race car in chassis. Third, you know, stuff like that. SRP. Actually, two McCall cars, sorry, should I say, for top two. But then you got a Port City car in fourth, and uh, good mix in there. Good racing. Um, I can't really, built motors to crate motors, awesome mix there right now, I can't really complain. Biggest story of 2013, barring CTMP closing, because we already touched on that. Uh, I think this is how much everyone in the province has stepped up their game. Like, look at Billy Zardo, he's got, he's got two feature wins this year, like, that's yep. huge for him, like, especially, like, even at Sunset, that shows how much talent there is at Sunset now, how much, how good the competition is there, like, now, especially, you know, Jason Whitty, has got three wins so far, like, and they, you four if you include the 75 lap or like he's uh, uh, it's hard to say what the big surprise is like this the whole racing in general has been a big surprise this year for my money's worth to wrap this up my biggest story of 2013 so far Thane Halliburton the Hillsdale Hurricane yeah. right now through the first half of the year he's averaging a win at Barry Speedway every other week you know, and, and they've got that's they're, they've been nice you got a strong 16 car field there yep. it's a paper clip there's not a lot of elbow room. No. You know, you got to grease yourself up real good if you want to come up through that field, if you want to come up through the back. Halliburton is putting up big numbers up there. Shepard's had a monster season, but Thane Halliburton, in terms of Barry Speedway regulars, I would say is probably the most promising driver under the age of 30 at Barry Speedway. He's had a colossal season right. so far. If he can keep that up, that'll be the biggest story of 2013, I think, is, is the Hillsdale Hurricane Thane Halliburton right. at Barry. Like, those are Dwayne Baker numbers from last year, and everyone knows how good Dwayne Baker was. Like, that's huge. Shepard and Halliburton have, have yeah. taken up permanent residency in the Barry Speedway victory lane. Anything you want to add, Andy? Well, touching base on Barry. You know, you, you take a guy like Dwayne out of it from last year. That's one good, strong front runner car. He's going to run to the back to the front, no doubt. I think Barry's, it's got good competition there, you know what I mean? But uh, I'd like to see some more, like Gordy traveled on the weekend. Like seeing him travel. I'd like to see some more of these Barry cars travel. Scott McTeer, I'd like to see them travel a little bit more. You know, let's see what they can do and uh, mix everything up in the offseason. Anything else? Uh, I just like racing how it is right now. I don't think there's, right now I wouldn't make any changes. But I think in maybe three or four years, there's going to be some big changes come towards the late motor division. So there you have it. That's bench racing for inside track. Follow me on Twitter, at it, Spencer Lewis. What's the Twitter handle? AndyCamera35. At AndyCamera35. What's your Twitter? How many, how many followers do you have on Twitter right now? No, no, no. We need to, we need to hurry that up. Y'all need to yeah. follow Graham Annis at on GTA, Twitter. Yeah, at GTA Racing 77. At GTA Racing 77. He will, he will. I'll follow you back. He'll cut you a check. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know for how much. Uh, he, he will write you a check. You follow him on Twitter. There you go for Inside Track. www.insidetracknews.com. It's Ben Tracing. We're out.